A cover stitch machine is designed to put professional finished hems on garments, especially on knit fabrics. It creates secure, even, stretchable stitches that move with the fabric. Like an overlock machine, it can also be used to attach lace, elastic, and other trims to a garment. But unlike an overlock machine, it is not set up with a blade to trim away excess fabric. This Juki 5-thread cover stitch is set up with three top stitch needles, a lower looper, and an upper looper. With this machine, the loopers create binding stitches between the straight stitch needles on both sides of the fabric. Threading of the machine always takes place from right to left, starting with the lower looper, the upper looper, and then the three top stitch needles. There is a threading diagram on the machine table which you can always refer back to. Starting with the lower looper, bring the woolly nylon thread up through the thread guides on the cone stand and then feed through the two eyelets on the horizontal thread guide bar. Next, thread through the angled stationary thread guide plate, then down through the eyelets on the lowest rung of the stationary thread guide, feeding from top to bottom through both. Come down through the thread guide before the tension plates, flossing over and through the tension plates in a counterclockwise direction, then through the next stationary thread guide. Open the door to expose the inner threading for the lower looper. Feed the thread through this small angled thread guide with an eyelet on each end and a small set of metal tension plates in between. Next, go through the stationary eyelet, cross through the gap above the rotating disc, through two more stationary eyelets, then travel through a narrow rectangular tunnel and through the eyelet just beyond this tunnel. Move through two more stationary thread guides, then spin the flywheel to bring the lower looper into view. Using tweezers or a threading tool, feed the thread through the small hole at the right-hand side of the looper, bringing the thread out along the front groove of the looper. Thread the eye of the looper from front to back and pull your thread tail out and towards the back of the machine. The upper looper can be threaded with woolly nylon as well for a softer finish. Follow the same guides through the cone stand as with the lower looper. Travel down through the stationary thread guide plates and to the next set of tension plates, this time wrapping in a clockwise motion below and through the plates. All tension plates with the exception of the lower looper will be threaded in a clockwise direction. Travel through the two stationary thread guides near the bottom of the horizontal arm, then up through a set of three thread guides, the middle guide being a part of the thread take-up lever. You may need to spin the flywheel to line up these three guides. Bring the thread through the guide above the final set of tension plates, then travel through the plates in a clockwise motion. Swing open the eye shield, travel through another stationary guide, then a small guide which extends out of the side of the needle bar. Lastly, the thread is brought through a kidney bean shaped opening called the spreader thread guide, then set aside a long thread tail towards the left of the machine. When you begin sewing, notice how the upper looper isn't actually threaded, but it will catch the thread coming out of this spreader thread guide with each stitch as it wraps through the straight stitch needles. Moving on to the top stitch needles, bring the three top threads up through their individual thread guides on the cone stand and down towards the machine. Bring each thread through their own set of stationary guides and tension plates. Again, remember to wrap around these plates in a clockwise direction. Then feed each thread through their own eyelet in the stationary guide just to the right of the white silicone box. By lifting the lid to this box, we can see a small felt pad which all three threads should travel across. Feed each thread through their own eyelet in the next stationary guide, then bring the threads through the three tiered guide rods with an eyelet at the top of each post. Looking behind the large stationary thread cover, we can see three thread guides for the top stitch threads on the take-up lever. Travel through these guides, up through three more take-up lever guides, which are slightly concealed by the clear needle cover atop the machine, then down through two more stationary guides. Floss the thread between the crossbar and the small metal tension plate, then through the eyelets atop the needle bar. Lastly, thread each needle from front to back, making sure the groove of each needle is facing forward. With the threading complete, bring the thread tails together towards the back of the machine, close the front plate, and lower the eye guard. The machine is now threaded and we're ready to sew. Whenever you've re-threaded the machine and are about to sew for the first time, 
Pull the three top stitch threads and the lower looper thread towards the back of the machine, but bring the upper looper thread over into the right in front of the needles. With the presser foot raised, bring your fabric up towards the feed dogs, then lower the foot onto the fabric. Now bring the upper looper thread over and in front of the three top stitch needles, holding onto the thread tail for the first few stitches. This allows the upper looper to properly catch on the top looper thread. After the first few stitches, trim the top looper tail and then continue sewing. You will only need to do this after re-threading the machine, and the looper will now be properly set up for your next stitch, as long as you leave a long thread tail after each session at the machine. Notice how the upper looper travels through the top stitching needles on the face of the fabric, and the lower looper travels through the needles on the back side. As the cover stitch is most commonly used for hemming, this machine has a hem guide which can be adjusted for varied hem widths. Loosen the set screw to slide the guide, then tighten to secure to your desired width. The machine also has an attachment which helps feed the raw edge on the underside of the hem, ensuring the edge is encased in the cover stitching. With your hem pre-folded, flip your work so that the right side of the garment is facing upward and the raw edge of the hem is in line with the attachment guide. As you sew, this guide will help feed the raw edge of the hem evenly through the machine, ensuring a secure stitch from the back side, while the hem width guide above remains in line with the folded edge of the hem. Notice how the raw edges are now neatly encased within the stitch width. 